Good morning. Today is February the 6th, and welcome to the Punta Gorda City Council meeting. Let the record reflect that all city council members and city officials are present. We'll begin the meeting by standing for the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, today and every day we will use the abilities that you have given us in ways that benefit others and bring a measure of justice and mercy to what we do. We ask your forgiveness when we miss the mark and when we do not act as the people you would have us be. May your precious spirit touch our lives and the lives of every person that do good work will flow from our hands. Respect for others will be our standard and kindly words will be indication of our love for you. We ask you, Lord, to bless us, keep us, make your face shine upon us, and be gracious unto us. Lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 John, that was a good message. Our first item of, on the agenda today is a proclamation for St. Vincent de Paul Day, and Councilmember Cummings is going to present the proclamation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Whereas the St. Vincent de Paul Society, initially called the Conference of Charity, originated in Paris, France, April 23rd, 1833, with the first meeting with the Society of the United States being held in St. Louis, Missouri on November 20th, 1845. And whereas the Society has been a friend to the poor and needy for over 180 years with core values including the dignity of human person, preferential option for the poor, charity and justice, virtue of humility, both personal and corporate, virtue of charity, friendship, community and simplicity, and whereas the St. Vincent de Paul provides food, clothing, home furnishings and financial systems to individuals and families in need. And whereas, as a method of raising funds, the St. Vincent de Paul District Council of Charlotte County will hold its 10th annual Walk for the Poor on February 16, 2019 at the Lashley Park Pavilion in Punta Gorda, <coughs> asking walkers to raise donations to help four Charlotte County conferences provide their needs of qualified families and individuals. And whereas, over the past year, the conferences and their combined volunteer workforce of more than 500 have helped thousands of men, women, and children in Charlotte County who have received goods and financial aid totaling $1.4 million. And therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda therefore proclaims February 16, 2019 as St. Vincent de Paul Day and encourages citizens to participate in the walk and devote their talents to volunteering the society, passing the adopted and regular session the sixth day of February, City of Punta Gorda. And Vincent Craig, you mayor. And this is for Richard Collins. Would you like to say a few words? Would you like to say a few words? No? <laughs> oh my goodness, everyone always wants to take an opportunity to promote their cause. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. All right, the next thing on the agenda is the introduction of board and committee member nominees. If your name is submitted uh, for a committee and you'd like to introduce yourself, would you please come to the podium? All right, um, seeing none, then oh, we have one. Wait. We have one. Oh, okay. Good morning. My name is Nora Jardina. I submitted my nomination for the Code Enforcement Committee. Um, my husband and I retired here to Punta Gorda a year ago from New Jersey. Uh, I owned my, I'm a nurse. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in nursing. I've owned my own businesses, hospice businesses in New Jersey for the past 20 years. Um, I think I understand, have really reviewed uh, the enforcement of Punta Gorda before we moved here. We did a lot of research and found Punta Gorda was the place we wanted to be since we're fishers and fishermen and boaters. Um, have really come to love the city. Uh, I'm currently on the citizen, attending the Citizens Academy and learning a lot more about our city. And I, as we're retired, I do have the time to commit to um, being sure I can attend the meetings and, and provide the services needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, we will adjourn as the City Council and we will reconvene as the CRA. <clears throat> They get Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. We will convene uh, as the CRA, the Community Redevelopment Agency. And the first thing on the CRA agenda are citizens' comments. Citizens' comments on anything on the CRA agenda, which includes the project status report, uh, approval of minutes, invoices from ICARD Merrill, um, and <coughs> a resolution uh, adopting the rules of conduct, a resolution um, affirming the policy to take action, uh, taking action on non-agenda items, and a discussion of appropriation of funds for rebranding of the wayfinding system. So if anyone has any comments on those, if you have three minutes, please come to the podium. Okay, seeing <coughs> no co public comments, then let's Shall proceed with our agenda. Howard, Mr. Executive Director, we'll let you take it away. Howard Kunick, CRA Director. This is our monthly report, <coughs> CRA. Uh, each, each month we do the municipal marina comparison um, from a year ago, and uh, the marina is, is jam-packed, uh, doing quite well. Uh, Liver boards have even gone up from a year ago. And we're at capacity on that. I believe 20 is the capacity, isn't it? Yeah, we don't want any more Liver boards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a city out there. Uh, the pump-out vessel, um, this is the activity. Uh, we compare it to the previous month and then a year ago as well. Mm -hmm. Herald Court Center, the contractor for the new Dream Salon and Spa, which will take <coughs> up the remaining space in the uh, retail area down below, has been cleared to co complete their construction. All the permits have been issued. Uh, they started cleaning, and um, hopefully within 90 days, we'll see uh, we'll see them opening. We'll see. We'll see how the progress goes. Uh, this has been updated. Jane has, a, Jane has a question for you. When is that 90 days up? Apologies. Probably uh, <coughs> to January. When did we close? April. April 15th, middle of April. The permit okay. was issued on February 1st. Or some of them. Um, obviously, if they're well on their way and it's April 15th and they're not ready to open, we're not going to stop and kick them out. But uh, at least we just want to see work getting done. Mm -hmm. uh, this, as, uh, as recent as yesterday. Mm. So the mm -hmm. site work has started. Uh, construction has started on the... Uh, Area One restaurant. Now the park is still open. Arbor Walk is still open. They have a narrow path that they use to uh, get to the site. We uh, opened up the uh, construction engineering and inspection services bid, and uh, we're reviewing those responses. And the next phase will be uh, bidding out the actual construction work. And we should, yeah, we haven't let that yet. Uh, procurement's still working on that one. Library, we've been by there. They're moving along very well. <coughs> uh, this is some of the progress made at the library. It's, it's looking really wonderful. And the community comments I've received when I've done the State of the City presentation is that the library is just looking magnificent. Howard, can you venture a, uh, a guess as to when that uh, would be set to go? Well, they're supposed to open sometime around July. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I was told. Looks like it's a lot further along than that, but it, it looks like it. But then I was talking last week to the um, librarian, yes, and she was saying she's been given a date of August. Yeah, 
so. Yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of interior work. While the outside's probably gonna get done early, mm -hmm. there's a lot of interior work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. It's good looking. That's all we got. Thank you, any other questions for Howard? None. Okay, then we'll move along to the next item on the agenda as approval of minutes of the January 2nd meeting. Uh, make a motion to approve uh, the meetings of uh, minutes of our regular meeting of January the 2nd, 2019. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 2nd. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is approval of the invoices from ICARD, Merrill, Culliston, Beer, and Ginsburg, PA. Move approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the invoices of the law firm. I'll abbreviate that if I can. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now we have a resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, adopting the rules of conduct, providing an effective date. Good morning. Uh, this is a resolution, which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, formally adopting rules of conduct and providing an effective date. And I think, no. any comments? Yes, the, I'd like to say one comment is a good rules to live by and I'd like to approve them. So I move approval. You are moving approval. I okay. would second that. Right. There's been a motion and a second to approve the rules of conduct. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And next is a, another resolution, which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the, of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, reaffirming its policy with regard to taking action on non-agenda items providing for consideration of non-agenda items only after approval by a majority plus one of a quorum of the Community Redevelopment Agency and to do so only for stated reasons and providing an effective date. Any discussion on this? No. Move approval. And second. There's been a motion and a second to approve this resolution. Please, <coughs> all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Okay, um, last item on our agenda, discussion and appropriation of funds for the rebranding of the wayfinding system. Mitchell. <coughs> Good morning, for the record, Mitchell Austin, Urban Design. Uh, so as part of the project that the, the CRA approved previously for the wayfinding rebranding, the city is required to file for a permit from FDOT for the placement of the new, newly proposed signs and the rebranding of the existing wayfinding signs. Um, as part of that permit process, it's required that we submit engineering plans. So city staff is requesting the appropriation of funds so that we can pay for those plans to be produced. Gary? Are we ever going to be able to not talk about signs in a, <laughs> in a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> was that Thank a plant? Was I, that a plant? <laughs> yes, I yield to Lynn. <laughs> I just have a question. Um, I, again, what Ger what Gary just said, um, yes, but yes. I'm concerned because we still don't have a finite cost on what this project is going to cost. This is for engineering and design. Then what? And how much more money is this going to cost? Um, as part of the engineering design, of course, we will have an opinion of cost from the engineer for the actual production of uh, the signage. We don't and do a very good job of defining costs for some of these projects, and it's really bothering me a lot. Um, w well, in terms of the wayfinding signs, uh, they're custom. The city has only done the wayfinding signs once in its entire history, so we don't have a good handle on what these things cost, unfortunately, at a staff level. But couldn't we couldn't we get estimated costs before we have to approve things like this? I, I'm just, it, it seems like every time we have a project that allocates funds for different projects, we are spending more and more money, and we're only getting a piece of the puzzle here. 
and this really bothers me. I, I would like to see defined costs for the entire project when we do things like this. I, it would be very helpful to us to know where we stand with, with you know, the, the rest of the build out of the, of the project. And this to me is only a piece of it and it, it really is disturbing. Mitchell, just a quick question. Where, where, what is actually the source of the funds? Are they coming out of uh, CR? Yeah, they're, they're coming from the CRA. From the CRA operating uh, line. Yeah. Okay. But to go along with that, yeah. a question is, it would be nice if we were to able, be able to see here, I go back to spreadsheets, yeah. um, some information that says, here is the level of reserves we have today. Here is, if we t use th these funds, here is what the impact on the reserves. And none of that data is provided. Yeah. And, and it would be nice if finance could provide that information so that we can see what the impact of the decisions that we're making. I agree. Yep. <clears throat> Debbie? Mitchell, I have, sorry, I have a question about the word redesign. We spent, you, the former council, spent an hour and something on how these were gonna be and look, and now we're doing a redesign? Um, the the redesign is the the nomenclature that we must use. we must be careful the CRA can't do any new projects this is an extension of an existing project so that's why the the word redesign is in there okay so we're not reinventing a wheel that's already <coughs> gone no, flat no ma'am okay we're playing semantics yes mm -hmm. carefully <coughs> carefully carefully I also know from um, experience with the county's landscape committee that the FDOT, um, I don't know if you want to say the rule book, the guide, you know. The process. It's, <laughs> well, it's just, it's so extensive. Yeah. And it's in all of the, I mean, when we were presented with, and Charlie, you were there. Yeah. When <clears throat> we were working on trying to uh, do landscaping for gateways and thoroughfares, and, and the FDOT guidelines are, are massive. And even to, to navigate through that, the can't, we had to hire a consultant to help us exactly. comply, and it saves, it saves actually so much time, uh, because when you hire someone that knows this, they can do this, it's much more cost effective than us actually spending staff time. Um, right. And, and it, right now, I don't think we have engineering staff time. No, we did not. <laughs> the city has a lot of projects underway. Yeah. Jaha. Um, I mean, this is necessary to move people around our downtown, so I, I move for approval. <coughs> I think this is a, uh, just a discussion item. Is it, uh, uh, well, it's is actually, it, no, we're actually seeking yeah. approval to okay. for these funds. Um, I'd like to see some of the documentation uh, provided to us um, that we discussed so that we can see the impact of I think for transparencies purposes. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied that we have enough information that we can go ahead and appropriate funds at this point. I think we need to see the whole project. What is this gonna cost us? All we can do is provide you an estimate. That, even that would be- It's gonna be a ballpark estimate, and um, that's all we can do. As far as the financials in your long-range financial plan, mm -hmm. you have the uh, FY 2019 budget for the CRA broken out into the various yep. categories and you can see what funds are available. I think that should have been something here right. at this agenda item, mm -hmm. not just having us go hunt for it, but it needs for the residents, um, people that are looking at this, Howard, yep. for, the, for the people that are looking at this and looking at this agenda item, you know, uh, our residents don't know, go where, don't know where to go to necessarily find things. And so it's important to, to put it right here so that it's easy for people to, to see and understand. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. We can go find it. Um, we can add it. But I just How is it necessary that, uh, that uh, is to have a decision today on this? No, okay. we don't. Uh, this is a project a that yeah. you've requested that we uh, redesign mm -hmm. and get the, the new nomenclature on the signs. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a something that has to be done tomorrow, but. Would, would, without a decision, would this delay some process or would uh, this be continuing? Uh, we would continue it till yeah. the next CRA meeting. Okay. Well, there's been a motion on the table, but it, the motion 
Check. I mean, we can continue it, but I mean, this is a regulatory thing. We have to do this to be approved by FDOT. This, this, this piece of it is, I mean, for us to do it at all, we have to do this. I don't disagree with you there. I think what we're talking about is just some additional information that would help us. Right. I know we, we have to, I'm, I'm fine with continuing it, but understand we have discussed this over the last few months. We, we've known mm -hmm. what the box is. We also know what the CRA, it's in the budget. We know, we know this, but we, I can continue it. I can withdraw the motion. I think we understand uh, what we're voting on, except we don't know how much it's going to cost, and I feel very uncomfortable about no voting on something that I don't know how much it's going to cost us. Right. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Certainly agree with that. Okay. Well, we're going to give you an estimate, but that's all it's going to be. That's okay. That's okay. okay. Estimates are, are good. But understanding, I mean, if we want to do right by residents and actually have good wayfinding in the city, we're going to need to approve this regardless of what it looks like. I understand. I don't think it's an issue of uh, yes or no. It's an issue of having a little bit more information yeah. so this board can feel comfortable mm -hmm. in making a decision. There's many things that come in front of uh, council mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the year that, uh, uh, <laughs> that there is a lot of substantial detail when you're talking about dollars. So I don't think this is any different. No, no, I, well, I think that we have heads, heads nodding and we're all... Oh, no, we're, we're, we're all together. Okay, yeah. good. Excellent. I would Thank make you. a motion that we continue this to the March CRA meeting, which will be March 6, 2019. Second that. There's been a motion and a second to continue this agenda item to the March 6, 2019 meeting. Any more discussion? Uh, Please, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So we will continue this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, commissioner comments. Debbie, would you like to start off with commissioner comments today? <laughs> I don't have anything. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I actually concur with what everybody's had to say. I stated my opinion, I think, right out the gate. So. <laughs> 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 nothing more. Nothing more? Okay. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? Okay, great. Uh, now we have citizen comments on anything CRA related. You have three minutes. Please come to the podium. Don Sabatini for the record. I just wanted to say thank you for the... Uh, discussion and the decision that you just made it really shows you're being very fiscally responsible and the citizens of Punta Gorda appreciate that thank you thank you, okay. thank you. <clears throat> any other comments okay with that said CRA meeting is adjourned we will reconvene as the city council thank you Very loud. Here we go. The City Council meeting is back in session. And the next item is, is not a quasi judicial public hearing, but it is a public hearing. No. Not well, it is on the. It's, it's not a public hearing. Oh, okay. It's, we're going to re review two ordinances. Yes, but we will have public comments public before comments. we entertain the resolution. And the public comments will be before the discussion. Correct. There will be no further public comment after or during the, uh, the council member uh, discussion. Correct. So um, what I want to state and remind everyone that um, each person is allowed uh, three minutes to present um, your testimony. And um, so you can come to the podium. We ask that you respect each other in this conversation. I know that there's a lot of passion about the, the topic that we're going to be discussing. And so as we have the rules of conduct, we ask that you respect each other. And when you come, you state your, your name and, um, 
and then when you, for the public record. And also, we don't applaud, we don't cheer for each person, because there are people in this room that do not necessarily agree with you. So we don't do anything like that because it's intimidating to other people. And so I appreciate your cooperation so that we all can respect each other and, and have a, a, a good discussion. So uh, is there anything else I need to mention before? No. No? Okay. So we will have public comments on uh, both resolutions. Do yes. you want to introduce the resolutions? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So public comment on the both resolutions on item C2 and C3. Nobody no, pu comment? no public comment? Uh -oh. <laughs> Please pour a line. <laughs> that was like, wow. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a pass. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'm thinking. Sign, sign. Today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had to shake the bushes here. <laughs> uh, are we ready? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Don Kidwell. Uh, I lived in Punta Gorda for 21 years. I was a professional engineer in Ohio for 35 years. And I wanted to talk about the cut through. I am totally in support of the cut through because I think it will help our community. I've not been a fan of how it's been handled along the way for various reasons, but lo looking forward, today what you're talking about on the signs, we don't know the cost. We don't know the cost, in my mind, we don't know the cost of the cut through. I've looked at the numbers increasing and I believe right now we have more things coming at us that we're not aware of. The permit is for a six foot rather than a five foot channel 60 feet wide. When we get over to Alligator, we do our 500 feet of cut and we the price has gone way up. We get to Alligator and who's going to make it six feet deep all the way out to the harbor? That's nine times the length of our canal. If we have to pay for dredging that, it's gonna, it, I don't know the answer. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. I don't know, I'm sure though that if the Corps of Engineers permitted six feet deep, they will expect it to be six feet deep and alligator because you don't build a bridge to nowhere. Well, most of us don't, <laughs> you know, but it's a boat going through that needs a six foot draft can't get out alligator. The um, second thing, so I, I guess, and back to what you all are saying, let's know the cost of something before we actually proceed. Um, I have questions about who's paying for it. You know, I feel like we've always paid everything Everybody pays for everything, bike, trails, um, pickleball courts, the dog park. We've all paid for all of these things. And I feel like setting aside one group to pay for this one thing is setting a precedent that is going to be used many more times in the future. And I don't know the implications of that or the risks of doing that. And then the third thing is how we're saying who should pay what amount. They, we've hired someone, paid a lot of money to get a good analysis of how to pay, uh, to how to appropriate these costs. But I look at it and it's by unit, uh, waterfront unit I guess it is, I'm, I don't know the right terminology. But the thing that I look at is my neighbor has a property that's 173 feet long, so he, he will, they will be hit by three units and yet they only can have one boat. People don't run two boats at a time. So I really think we should be looking at how many households are, <coughs> you know, we should be charging by household because each household could have one boat in use at a time. Uh, you know, if you have three, four, five, another neighbor has a boat, several jet skis and so on. It's, you know, it, it, it's by household in my mind. And I think that we paid a lot for a very theoretical Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Don. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me know, the light was still green, so maybe that's not working quite correctly. Oh, oh really? It didn't change color? No. Oh, it did. Oh, did it? Oh, it did? Missed, my apologies. Okay. Wendy Young, um, I live here in Punta Gorda. Your name, Gorda. please? Could you I'm state your name, please? Wendy she just did. She just oh, did. I'm sorry. Young. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I, I want to commend the city council for all the work that you've done so far to make Buckley's Pass exist. And, and I'm very much in favor of that. I 
do want to ask you to take two things into consideration. One is if the cost is increasing so much because the seawall contractors are not available, it seems to me if the seawall work <coughs> is going to be finished this summer, we could save a lot of money by just waiting until they're available. So I ask you to take that into consideration. The other thing I uh, would like to ask you is to reconsider the fee assessment methodology. We have an existing funding mechanism for maintaining all of Punta Gorda Isles Canal District. And, and I don't think anybody complains about that. We all understand that we're part of a community and we contribute wholly to that community. This new methodology that's proposed <coughs> that separates out those people who live in one part of Punta Gorda Isles Canal District as the only people to pay for this cut, I think is an incorrect and undesirable precedent to set. I also think that redefining what a tax unit is from a tax parcel to a water access unit is also a very undesirable uh, methodology for computing what this new fee will be. So I'm asking you to reconsider those two aspects. The other thing I would <coughs> like clarification on, and perhaps this will come out in your discussion, is what is the obligation to Charlotte County for um, maintaining the dredging of Alligator Creek once the project is over. There was discussion previously about uh, those people who were in this new um, tax district to be paying an annual fee for the dredging, and I'd like clarification if that still is in the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Candy Gulick. My husband and I live in, on Via Paloma, uh, and we own a condo on Rock Dove in the bird section. I'm very passionate about the success of this project. Over the last three and a half years, I've researched it from many perspectives, from boater safety to how the environment will be affected, from the impact on the people living in the assessment zone and the benefits to the bird section area, to boaters and the boating industry. Um, thank you to our city government for all your hard work, of course, and to Hans Wilson and Associates for all his expertise and support of the project. And to the grassroots supporters of the project um, who have stuck with this lengthy process to see it come to this point. Uh, while some say the city should bear the cost of this project, I remind you that several attempts at a cut through failed over the past 15 to 20 years because of a lack of financial means. The result of this attempt is succeeding because enough supporters said they would be willing to pay a fair amount uh, for the project. I believe the city council has come up with a fair number and I urge the city council to pass these resolutions so that we can get Buckley Pass built. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, my name is Cindy Wagner Gullen. I live on River Bay Drive, the northwest side, in the unincorporated area of Charlotte County. There are 19 property owners on River Bay Drive. 11, 11 of us will be affected by the definition of the, the city's definition of water access units. Um, we have greater than 85 feet per year definition on 11 of us owners. Uh, we are Charlotte County. And I, what I'm asking is that the interlocal agreement in, with Charlotte County that we be taxed upon Charlotte County guidelines and not the city guidelines, or tax us on per lot, not how much water frontage we have. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mike Nichols. I live on Spoonville Court. <clears throat> um, more of a question and an observation. I read your econometric study, and it seems very confusing as to how to assess to pay what. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in economics, a master's in business. I used to run studies in a past life, and it's like an example of if you want a study, you'll get a study. 
my question for you is, did you all consider any competing courses of action as to how to pay for this? There are other ways to pay for it. Have we considered it? And if so, what are they? Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Wanda Winnell. I live in Punta Gorda Isles with my husband. And I'm not only representing but myself, but all my neighbors. Um, I would just like to say, unfortunately, there have been many delays and obstacles preventing Buckley's Pass to move forward over the past several, several years. And then costs keep rising. My neighbors and my husband and I are glad to pay the fee. We know that we will benefit from Buckley's Pass and it will be advantageous to us and our neighbors. So we encourage the council to move forward and thank you very much for all you have done so far so we can get going and get this project completed. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mary Ann Adesani, Raven Court. I just wanna say that I am very much in favor of the project. I think uh, it's hard to find someone who's not. This is a wonderful opportunity for the entire community to enjoy more area in which to boat and see our beautiful city. The thing I'm most concerned about though is our rush to try to figure out how to pay it. And going back to just a few moments ago when we were talking about another issue, wanting more information. I think it's an immediate cause to say, okay, the bird section is going to be the group that's going to benefit by this. But this is a project that is for the community. It is not for one specific area. And we can't fool ourselves in believing that people from other areas are not going to come and use this pass. It would be a shame to penalize or to begin to, to put a stigma by placing a name on a group of people who are the benefited. That's a bad thing to start doing. And I ask the council to please do not rush and do this. If we had broadly put this in within our system, where we absorb this within our maintenance system, this would occur at no hardship to anyone. It would be done within a blink of an eye. We would need all these people and all these studies and all this money spent on trying to do something that would not be a big problem for everybody to absorb. But we're singling it out, we're taking a group of people, and we're saying, you're going to be responsible for this now, and, and still we're not getting any answers. And yet, we're rushing to the deadline for these things to happen, and we have no say, and we're frustrated. So I ask you to please hold the reins of the horse just seek a different way. Look at it as the whole pie and not a quarter of the pie. We are one group, one area, all enjoying the same thing. If we said to you we're gonna put a, a system in where we would have you use a token every time you go through the Buckley Pass, you'd sit there and say, that's crazy. The pet waterways is everyone's. Let it be everyone's. Let everyone have an opportunity to pay for it and make it a fair and equitable distribution amongst the community. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Reverend Mike Ford. I'm the pastor of the Congregation of the United Church of Christ on Akia Sta. As one of the landowners that is along the proposed pass, uh, the Buckley Pass, uh, we have no benefit at all from the pass being existing. We have none of our parishioners who boat to church on Sunday morning. And uh, we haven't yet been able to do an assessment of what this would cost us in increased liability for our property. We also know that this, uh, the amount that's proposed as an assessment for our property would presents about 20% of our annual budget. If we were to pay that assessment, we would have to almost eliminate our community outreach projects. Uh, we are completely privately funded uh, we see no public funds, so we don't have any benefit from this from this past. I really appreciate the fact that the boaters in our community would have an increased access, uh, but I think we have a different perspective on what benefit it would be for us to have this pass in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you. 
Karen Turnbull, Punta Gorda Isles. Um, <clears throat> I've been a resident and property owner there since 1991 in the bird section. Uh, one thing that everyone seems to agree on is that we would like this pass completed as soon as possible. The reason it's not being completed as soon as possible is because of this funding business with the bird section only. It's a stumbling block. It's divisive. It's complicated. We've had to hire all these people. As the previous speaker said, if we already had a well-defined Punta Gorda Isles Canal Maintenance District, Buckley Pass is part of the Punta Gorda Isles Canal Maintenance District, and it's an, it's an established assessment district with legal boundaries. No one has complained. If the cost were spread among all the residents, it would be much less for everyone. You would not, to have, would not have to have a three-year plan with interest, which would be much less complicated for city officials. Um, Mr. Cummings, at the December 5th meeting, you commented that this council really had no choice but to accept the bird section yes. only. May I, may I remind you that you're to that direct your comments to I'm sorry. the entire okay. council? Okay, so Mr. Thank Cummings you. at the December 5th meeting commented that the council really had no choice in this bird section only decision, assumingly because you thought it was from, he thought it was from, the recommendation was from the legal firm. The recommendation to assess the bird section only did not come from the legal firm. The recommendation came from the city manager's office February 3rd, 2016 to the then city council, which approved the idea. The legal firm was hired much later. They gave their report May 5th of 2017 and their task was not to define a bird only district or a Punta Gorda Isles district or any district. Their task was only to determine how to assess the people within the district that had already <coughs> been determined. In other words, were water access unit. So please know this council can change this. You can reverse a bad decision. You can remove the stumbling block which will place a stain that will not go away. If this all goes through, we will not, no one will forget this. This will always be here. It will always be a bad feeling for everyone. Everyone in Punta Gorda Isles will benefit from safety, from reduced boat traffic at Ponce Inlet and many other. Please make an amendment to, an amendment. to just change the Mr. assessment Swan, part. Thank, Thank you. you. Morning. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Bill Eslack. Um, I live on Bell Harbor, and I'm in the bird section. And, I'm, and I will thank you. I am going to be a beneficiary of the cut through. I'm also going to be a beneficiary of an assessment on my dock. And what I would like to say is there are numerous other people in Punta Gorda Isles that are going to be a beneficiary of me paying for the cut without them having to spend a dime. I use the, the, the smuggler's cut, cut quite frequently to go fishing. I have to play the tides. Once the cut's done, we won't have to do that. But <clears throat> going back to your, your, your study that you did, the economic study, and the gentleman that was up here a short time ago, an economic study can tell you anything you want it to tell you. But for some reason or other, the bird section was singled out, and the whole basis for the um, assessment district was based on the economic study and not on usage. There are people throughout Punta Gorda Isles that would use that cut that don't necessarily live in the bird section, but they're going to take the shortcut. They're going to get out the harbor as soon as possible and we're gonna pay for it. And so, as you move forward today with, with your decisions on this, take into consideration not only the economic impact, but the usage impact and the people that are, that are surrounding and spread the, 
assessment out more evenly throughout Punta Gorda Isles rather than singling out just one particular group to pay for it. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else would you please that wishes to make a comment, if you would please form a line. My Morning. name is Charlene Duggan. I live on Wren Court in Punta Gorda. We've been there 18 years. What I'm going to say is from my husband. He's a fisherman and a boater. Has been so all these years. He knows from experience and looking at this situation that more people than just the bird section are going to be using this cut. That whole S-curve that brings you to ponds takes a lot of time. There are people that live in the Sunset Lake area that are going to be using this cut because it'll be shorter in time. He even said that up to, I think there's a Ryan Avenue, all the way up to that area, those people will backtrack a little to save time to use this cut. He had a condo that was in that area <laughs> and said he knows for sure this is going to happen. So my assessment is whoever made the decision, regardless who it is, to only charge the people in the bird section is not a boater with experience that has been through this area for years and years. I'd like to make one last comment with regard to the citizens of Punta Gorda. Just know that today you are working with citizens who are retired professionals, business owners, government workers, people who can analyze what the city council is doing in our city. Today you have people watching all the time. We're just asking you to listen to us and listen to our experience and the fact that we are living with all the decisions that you make for us. Thank you. Hi, my name my name's Richard Collins. I live in Punta Gorda Isles. I live a, 10 minutes away from Ponce Inlet. I will, unlikely that I would ever use the bird cut. That doesn't really bother me. Uh, it wouldn't have bothered me whether I helped pay for it or not either. But I remember back in 2014, I believe it was, we had a meeting of hundreds and hundreds of people up at the Charlotte County uh, business, whatever it was, uh, building, hundreds of people, and many people in favor and not in favor of the bird cut. I don't remember a single person objecting to the bird section paying for it. Uh, not a single person got up there and said, hey, we, we want it, but we don't want to pay for it. So when it comes down to paying for it, then people don't want to pay for it. You know, it's just common kind of thing. So uh, I, I, I believe I remember that that was having the bird cut people, uh, the bird section pay for it was part of the original plan from the very beginning. Um, that's just the way I saw it at, at that meeting back in 2014. Um, but like I say, the other thing though, it's, it does seem to be to be fair to pay by household rather than by by length, because that, that's the way you assess um, now for canal maintenance, because you're really paying for the maintenance of the canal, not just the seawall. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Mike Fauci, and I do live in the bird section, and the question becomes whether I'm going to be benefit from uh, this pass. The truth is I use uh, the cut at the present time, and we'll probably not need that, but I am in total favor of it from the, uh, the aspect that uh, those of you that know me, I've been involved in much of the marine safety within this community. I do patrols of Coast Guard Auxiliary, and the one thing that bothers me about this mostly is that the people that I've spoken to in all areas, including even people that live on alligator cut, that section. Talk about uh, the safety of having that cut. We know that it's important to have. Everybody 
needs to have another way to get in. If you're on that harbor and the weather turns nasty, all of us will use that. It is a major safety factor. So I beg you to consider, it's not just the bird section that's going to be using that pass in order to get out of inclement weather or a breakdown or a towing issue. It's going to be all of Punta Gorda Isles and much of Punta Gorda. So I do beg you to reconsider that. I am for it and I'm going to pay it no matter what, but I do want you to consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Harry DiMarco. I reside on Elmar Drive. <coughs> been a resident of PGI for 18 years. I used the old smuggler's cut. I have nothing against the Buckley's putt cut, but everybody can use the waters of PGI, the harbor, the rivers, and everybody will use this cut. The people in that area, the bird section, should not be responsible for making access for everybody else. It should be done for everybody's use. It. Thank you. My name is Diane Van Beek, um, 1447 Raven Court. Um, I have a couple questions for the council. First of all, <clears throat> I want to know if it is the intent of the council to establish two new precedents. Number one, to divide the PGI Canal District, as I don't believe it's ever been done before, and secondly, to establish water access units as a new method of taxation rather than um, the tax parcel that we've always used in the past. Um, another question I have is that now with the virtual doubling of the projected cost of the project, has there been any attempt made at finding out what the cost would be per parcel if we used the current system that we have of taxing the canal maintenance district. It seems that a lot of the controversy, although it's not been brought up much today, um, goes back to the increased value of the properties once the bird cut is put in, the Buckley's Pass is put in for the, for the um, bird section properties. It, it just seems curious to me that we are imposing a non ad valorem assessment on a potential ad valorem value increase. Um, so I just like those things to be kept in mind in your discussion. I appreciate everything you've done to, for us to this point. I think we've come a long way, but I think we have a ways to go yet. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Is it afternoon? Anyhow, I'm Brad Gamblin. I'm resident of Punta Gorda Isles and in the bird section. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit mystified, but I'm really most concerned not about who's paying for what. The cost of this for our, uh, my wife and I as live at residents on Almar in the bird section is a fraction of a percent of the value of our residents and I'm really not worried about what worries me the most is that we have now all of this concern of how we're going to be paid for it. It's been months that we have been determining a just way to pay for the bird cut. The longer we delay, the more it's going to cost. We've already seen cost increases come in. We have seen for 20 years or more that this cut has been known and has not been done for the simple reason that people have not been willing to pay for it. And here we are at the end, ninth hour with this could be done in months and we're going to go try and many of the people that have spoken are going to try and basically block it now. And then what happens? Will, it, will we have to go through all this again? And will we lose the bird cut? Will we be going through another two year process? And I will point out, I was at those meetings, there were 700 people at that meeting and of the 700 people there, there were about 30 who were naysayers for the project. And it's, there is nothing, uh, and I at the time was told there was nothing in the history of Punta Gorda where there had been that much will for getting a project done. 
I'll pay it. I'll be happy to pay it. I just want it done. And I will benefit from it, from access, and also from property values. And if the people on the other part over there, let's just get it done. They will benefit too. That's fine. They should. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dean Blamke, I live at, uh, on Greed Drive in Pontagorda Bird Section. Uh, I've been working with this project as a volunteer for, since uh, 2015, I think. And I'd just like to comment from the standpoint of the increased cost of the project since it started. Initially, when it started, we asked for a project that we thought could be done and could be guided through all the different uh, agencies that we have to go through. And of course, that was a bare bones project. As Mr. Wilson has worked on this project, working with the various agencies, the project has improved and improved and improved to what, where today we have something as different than it was before. Back when we had that meeting uh, at the Charlotte Harbor uh, Events Center, I believe that we determined the costs were gonna be somewhere between $500 and $1,500 per, I think we said household at the time. And now we're at $989, if the number came out correctly, um, per voting unit. And I think we've kind of hit our marks there. I think we're good. $989 is not a, a large amount of money when we're considering the overall value of our homes and the access that we're gonna get to, uh, to the harbor. Yesterday, I took my boat from my home out through Ponce, and as I went through the S-turn going into Sunset Lake, I said, oh, would that be so nice to be turned right now. But I have another 30 minutes of mind-numbing uh, time to go before I get to the Ponce Harbor or Ponce Outlet. So it's going to benefit not just me, but a lot of other people out in that area. The costs are within line of what we originally thought, um, and it's time to bring this project to fruition. So thank you very much for everything that the City Council has done, and good luck on your decision. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, with that, there's no one else, then we will begin our discussion. Um, yes, so uh, this is the first resolution on our agenda uh, in this uh, section of the agenda, which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, relating to the dredging project, describing the real property to be located within the proposed Buckley's Pass dredging assessment area, determining that such real property will be specially benefited by the dredging project, establishing the method of assessing the project costs of the dredging project against the real property that will be specially benefited thereby, establishing other terms and conditions of the assessments, establishing a public hearing to consider imposition of the proposed assessments and the method of their collection, directing the provision of notice in connection therewith, and providing an effective date. 